Welcome back to Physics 210 Fluids. Today we are finishing our hydrostatics section, so looking at fluids that are not moving. And the first thing we have to look at here is the buoyant force. So that property of an object is called the buoyancy. And the idea behind the buoyant force is this. We said last time that an object being pushed on by a fluid feels a force on it from that fluid. And in the example of like my paper, it felt a force from the air pressure from above and a force from the air pressure from below. And I said that those two forces exactly canceled out and gave us no net force. It turns out that is not exactly right. These forces from above and below do not exactly cancel out. As it turns out, because our force changes with our height in the fluid, the pressure below is a little bit greater than the pressure above. And as a result, the force that an object feels from below from a fluid is going to be a little bit bigger than the force it feels from above. So the result of this is that we get a net force in the upward direction from the fluid, and this is called the buoyant force. The equation for the buoyant force is the following, and deriving this isn't, uh, deriving this for an object with a simple geometry like a cylinder is pretty straightforward. The book does this. Doing it for an arbitrarily shaped object involves a little bit of calculus, but it isn't too bad either. We're, we're not going to worry about either of these. We're just going to use the result for this equation. So the buoyant force is equal to rho times v times g. And we're going to define all of these uh, right now. g, we know that, that is our gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. Rho f here is the density of the fluid. And Vf is the dense, or excuse me, Vf is the volume of fluid displaced by the object. So if we have an object in a fluid, it is displacing the fluid. That is, it's taking up space that otherwise the fluid, the fluid would be taking up. And that amount of volume is the volume that goes into that equation. Often, this is going to be the volume of our object. If our object is completely immersed in the fluid, that is going to be the volume of our object. However, we can have objects that are only partially in a fluid, only displacing part of their volumes worth of the fluid, and so in that case we would use that volume in this equation. We'll get to some examples of this in a little bit. The direction of this is always upward, and that is in the opposite direction of gravity, or opposite the direction of gravity. All right, so let's do some examples of this. So for our first example, let's imagine that we have some water. Here's the surface of our water. And we have a cube in the water, and we'll say this is a 10 centimeter cube. So let's say that this cube is made of styrofoam, which has a density of around 50 kilograms per cubic meter. So in this case, what is the buoyant force on the object? We can just do some, some calculations uh, pretty easily here. So we have rho v g. So our fluid density here 
That is the density of the water around the object. That is a thousand. Our volume here, so a 10 centimeter cube, this is equal to 0 0.1 meters. So this is 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. So that is a total volume of 0 0.001 cubic meters. So this is kilograms per cubic meter. This is cubic meters and our Gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. So when we multiply these together, the cubic meters are going to cancel. We're going to get kilogram meters per second squared. That is newtons. Those are our units of force, so that's good. So 1,000 times 10 to the minus 3 times 9.8 is going to give us 9.8 newtons of force in the upward direction. So our styrofoam cube feels this upward force from the from the water. I'll write that over here. Let's do the same calculation, but instead of for a styrofoam cube, let's imagine that we have a cube that is the same size, still 10 centimeters, but let's say the cube is made of lead. So the density of lead is 11,300 kilograms per cubic meter, just a little, a little bigger than the styrofoam. So if we do the calculation for the buoyant force on this cube of lead, let's pause for a second and ask ourselves, is it going to be bigger or smaller than the buoyant force on this cube of styrofoam? As you may have noticed, uh, it is going to be exactly the same, and that is because in our equation, we have the fluid density, the volume displaced, the volumes are the same, and g, which is of course the same for both of these. So the density in this equation is not the density, is not the density of the object itself, it is the density of the fluid surrounding the object. So indeed, for the cube of lead versus the cube of styrofoam, if they are the same size, the force the buoyant force from the fluid is going to be the same on both of them. So that is, that is an interesting result. So if that is true, we're going to, I'm just making room here, we're going to continue with this example. If that's true, how can we explain the two very different behaviors that we see, right? If we have a cube of styrofoam in, you know, surrounded by water and I let go of it, it is going to rise through the water column upward. If I have a cube of lead in the water and I let go, it is going to sink. It is going to go downward. So what does this difference do to? Well, let's draw free body diagrams of these objects. So let's draw a free body diagram for the styrofoam and for the lead. So for both of these, they feel this upward force of 9.8 newtons from the, from the buoyant force, right? They are also both going to feel a downward force from gravity, and that is, that is where we run into a big difference. So for this styrofoam block, we have, uh, we have a, a mass, so our mass is our styrofoam density, times the volume, so that is 50 times 0 0.001. Uh, so this, this was the volume in cubic meters, this was the density, so this is equal to 0 0.05 kilograms, 50 grams, and so mg for this block is going to be 0 0.05 times 9.8, which is going to be 0 0.49 newtons. So we get 9.8 newtons up and 0 0.49 newtons down from gravity. So that gives us a net force that is upward and is, you know, 9 point something newtons upward. We're going to do the same thing for lead. There, our, uh, our force of gravity is still equal to mg, our mass is 0 0.001 times 11,000. So that gives us a mass of, that was 11.3 kilograms 
times 9.8. So this gives us a downward gravitational force of 110, 111 newtons. So if we're keeping our vectors to scale, this force vector is <laughs> going to be off the, off the screen. It is going to be much, much bigger than the upward force, than the upward buoyant force. So for the lead, we end up with a net force that is big and downward. So interestingly, the difference in the behavior between the styrofoam and the lead has nothing to do with the buoyant force by itself. It only has to do with the relative size of the buoyant force when compared to the downward force of gravity. In general, in the absence of other forces, we can tell what's going to happen based on the relative density of our object and the surrounding fluid. So if the density of our object is less than the density of the fluid, then our object is going to float. If our object has the same density as our fluid, this is called neutrally buoyant, and it will neither float or sink, it will stay in the fluid, not accelerating up or down. And if our object density is greater than the density of the fluid, our object is going to sink. The reason for this is exactly because we are you know, changing the relative size of the buoyant force and the gravitational force. So this is changing this competition between the buoyant force and gravity. All right, lastly, as I said at the beginning, our volume displaced does not have to be the volume of the object. Often it is, uh, so that's Vf. Vf is often the volume of the object, but not always. For example, if we have some fluid, here's the surface of our water, and we have an object that is partly below the water and partly above. So maybe this is some ball or something, I don't know, and part of it's above the water and part of it is below the water, right? We have a, <laughs> uh, a barrel that's partly floating in the in the water, right? Or it's floating in the water, partly above, partly below. So the volume of our total object is bigger than the volume of just this part that's below the surface. And this part below the surface, this is the volume of fluid that our object is displacing. This is the VF in our buoyant force equation. If we have an object that is partially floating like this, we know a couple things. Vf is less than V object because we can't have we can't have more of the object below the surface than the whole object. So this has to be true if we're floating on the surface. And also, if we're in equilibrium, so we are not in the act of floating up higher in the water or sinking down further in the water, if this is balanced, then we know that our gravitational force is equal to the buoyant force. What that means, uh, we will erase part of this just to make a little bit of room on the left. What that means, if Fg equals Fb, our gravitational force we know is equal to mg, our buoyant force we know is equal to rho f vf times g. And the mass here, the mass of our object, this is the whole mass, not just the mass of the part that's underwater. So this mass is equal to the density of the object times the volume of the whole object. So this part on the left is rho object, v object, g which equals rho f vf 
times g, our g's cancel out, and I'm going to solve for vf here. So vf is equal to rho object v object over rho fluid. This tells us a relationship between vf, that is how much of the object is underwater, or excuse me, under whatever fluid we're talking about, and the ratio of the two densities. So if our object density is, let's say, half that of the fluid, so if the, if the density of the object is half that of the density of the fluid, maybe this is wood or something that's, you know, lighter than water but not as light as styrofoam, then this fraction is one half, and so Vf, the volume of the object that is below the surface of the fluid, is equal to one half of the total volume of the object. So in that case, this round thing would be floating, you know, halfway in, halfway out of the liquid, or, yeah, of the, of the fluid. What this says with regard to this picture is, you know, just estimating we have, let's say, three quarters of our object below the surface of the fluid. That means that the density of the object is about three quarters the density of the fluid. So if this is water from this picture, the density of this object is something like, you know, 750 or 800 kilograms per cubic meter.